One of these quotes from the Old Testament, it's said several times, it really sticks with me. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's not saying God's afraid of anything. It's saying when we fear the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is like an applied knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. Knowledge is just head, head knowledge. Wisdom is applied knowledge. Wisdom is, is what uh, the good life is all about. Saying when you learn to fear the Lord, that's when you're at the beginning of being a wise person. And being a wise person is a good thing. That's something we should all want. That's what helps us navigate life well. The problem with that is a lot of people don't want to fear. Fear is an unpleasant feeling. We would rather not be afraid. Um, there's a meme that I see on Facebook every now and again. There was a reality TV show called Jersey Shore. A bunch of uh, very vain men and women living together. It's not a holy show. Don't watch it. But it's just a picture of one of these uh, doofuses kind of freaking out. And uh, he's quoting, he says, some people say, only God can judge me. He says, that should scare you. And he's just got a really dramatic face with his eyes popping up. But that's a really good thing to keep in mind. You know, we live in an era where a lot of people, they don't want to feel afraid. They don't want to hear about how they should be afraid. They don't want to have fear of the Lord. They say, only God can judge me, and they want that to be the end of it. But if you think about that, that's a terrifying thing. There is a God who sees everything and will judge the wicked. That should scare you. That should, if that doesn't scare people, you know, let's think about this. When you think about the stereo, I know there's exceptions to every rule, but when you think about the stereotypical person who says, only God can judge me, what kind of person do we imagine? Anybody ever said that to you? What kind of people say that? Why would they say that? Why would anyone say that? Only God can judge me. Because they're doing something they shouldn't. And somebody is highlighting that. Okay? So, uh, we have a rule at our household. No singing at the dinner table. Okay? Because, you know, Sarah Beth and I are singing all the time. And our kids can easily start singing and forget to eat. So, no singing at the table. Uh, sometimes I'll break the rule. I'll start humming something. And the kids will say, no singing at the table, Daddy. And I'll say, you're right. But lately, the cutest thing is Jesse. He'll start singing, and uh, Susanna will, I can't correct him. He's just so cute. But Susanna will correct him. She'll say, no singing at the table, Bubba. And he'll say, you're white. <laughs> and then he'll go right back to singing. But, I mean, that's the response of a person who gets called out for doing something that they shouldn't do. You're right. I shouldn't do that. But whenever a person responds, only God can judge me. How dare you call me out? That's not a person who wants to fear the Lord. That's not a person who is seeking to grow in holiness and righteousness and is, is appreciating your help. That's a person who doesn't want to learn to fear the Lord and wants to live as a cocky and confident person. Now, let's be clear. Is the church a place of judgment? Who said yes? Amber! Man, Amber's doing well. Amber's reading Romans. That'll rock your socks off, won't it? Yeah. So in 1 Corinthians, Paul is talking about a church that won't judge this unrighteous man who's sleeping around and behaving badly. They just leave him be, you know, because judge not lest ye be judged, right? Forget what comes after that. No judging. He says, you mean to tell me y'all can't figure out right from wrong? On the day of judgment, we're going to be judging angels, much less people. But you can't figure out right and wrong in the church? Do not judge does not mean forget that you know the difference between good and bad. And it doesn't mean don't care about your neighbor enough to tell them. Do not judge means don't be a hypocrite. You know, anytime it's talking about that, it's in the context of hypocrisy. It's when you're calling somebody out for something that you yourself are doing. Every time it gets brought up by Jesus, by Paul and Romans, the concern is not that we don't name evil. Heck, our job on earth here is to do battle against the forces of wickedness. How do you do that if you can't name wickedness? That makes no sense. It's like going to battle without a sword or a gun, just hoping it all works out for you. That's how some people are as Christians. No, we do battle by naming the good and the bad, raising up the good, shutting down the bad. Now, I'm not saying, once again, I just let me be, we're not killing anybody. Our enemies are not those of flesh and blood, Paul says. We're doing battle against the powers, the principalities, the forces of darkness in the heavenly realms. 
That's a quote from Ephesians. I'm not making that up. We're here to do heavenly battle. Part of the way we do that is shutting down the bad, bringing up the good. That's judgment. That's exercising discernment. That's this wisdom that the psalm is talking about. And the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. I think I wrapped that up in a pretty little bow. Let's